Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, elites. Welcome back to the Minecraft Guide. It is me, YouTuber Waddles. Hope you're doing well today. So, we meet again over at a brand new location, actually. We've never been here in the series before or in any of the streams. Now, this location is a cold, cold frozen location. I actually passed a few arctic boxes on the way over here, which was really cool. Now, we live on the right-hand map near the top right corner, but not quite. We're currently over, well, I guess we're off of the left-hand map now. Now, why are we over here? Well, we're over here for ice, actually. Today, the plan is to build an auto sorter. Now, to build an auto sorter the way that I like to build them, we need ice. Now, usually, I would be grabbing packed ice from a frozen ocean, but I don't think we've actually found a frozen ocean quite yet. So, we're going to have to get creative and, and do something a little bit different. Thankfully, as of the Minecraft Java 1.14 update, we can actually craft packed ice, which is beautiful. But, it is expensive. I mean, look at that. 45 normal ice into 5 packed ice ouch big ouch for sure but it's okay it's worth it and thankfully ice regenerates slowly but surely now there's a lot of ice here this is a big frozen lake i don't think we'll have to harvest the whole lake but we definitely will need to harvest more than what i just got i think we need to come out of this area with probably about a half stack of packed ice to be safe but i'm probably aiming for more like a, a whole stack but We'll definitely need to get sailing soon and find a frozen ocean because ice is used in a lot of different things. So today, then we're going to go ahead and start off or continue starting off by getting ice. Then we'll meet back up over at our base and build an auto sorter for the wool farm that we just set up last episode. Well, 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 it looks like your boy lied to you because we're not back over at our base. Would you take a look at this? This is another brand new village here. Uh, and it does have inhabitants. I was about to say, does anybody live here? What do you have? Rabbit stew. I always forget about rabbit stew, but no trade today, sir. I will come back later. We're going to go ahead and mark this town and, and carry on. We have lots to do today, so we'll come back for the bell. We'll come back to check out the village of the villagers. Um, and I got to say, I like the these uh, savannah structures. I think they look really good. Ah, yes, this creepy place. I also found this place when I was heading over to that snowy biome. Mm-hmm. Very, very spooky. Scary. Uh, seriously, the vibe of these towns is creepy. I'll take that bucket. Thank you very much. Ah, and so here we are, home sweet home again over at the Wool Market. So, this is the thing that we built in the last episode. It was really fun, and I think it looks really good. Today, we're going to hook a collection system up to this thing, and actually an auto sorter as well. Now, to prepare for this project, I actually started smelting up a lot of iron. We have stacks and stacks of iron waiting for us inside of here to be used, because today, we're going to need to make a lot of hoppers. We're going to need to make a lot of rails, probably. I think we're out. Uh, yep, lots of rails. Just lots of, lots of, lots of stuff. So, I'm going to go ahead and start by actually creating a lot of that lot of stuff, like the rails and the other ingredients that I need to build. And then we're going to go ahead and start getting this thing in. This is going to be the biggest redstone project that I have done in, honestly, in probably years. Well, maybe not years, but it's been a long time since I've done such an involved project. Now, the first step to this project is collecting the wool. We, of course, need to pick the wool up from the sheep market and move it over to somewhere if we want to actually sort it and store it. Now, collecting the wool from here is actually going to be pretty straightforward. It'll just be tedious. To pick up the wool from this sheep market, I think we can run a simple hopper minecart line underneath all of these stalls. Now, we do have uh, a lot of colors here. We have 16 different colors. A hopper minecart has five different slots. That doesn't really add up. I mean, look at this. We have two colors right here, then we have two right over here, and then it sounds like we're going to have, uh, what, one more right there? No, two more right there. So, one single hopper minecart wouldn't be able to handle this whole area. I feel like things would probably end up getting backed up, which isn't a good thing. So, I think we can actually split this into two different zones. We'll have this zone over there from the brown and purple all the way over to whatever's on the front the light blue and then this side will be lime green all the way to red orange so two separate lines the tricky part here the tedious part i guess is going to be actually getting this line to line up because the stalls are kind of placed randomly so 
I'm gonna try and dig out the corners and spots that we need to turn in and then we'll jump down underneath this thing and basically try and link everything up. Uh, it's gonna be a little tricky. <laughs> I didn't think ahead when I was setting this thing up, so we're gonna just have to do a little bit of trial and error, but it's all pretty straightforward at this part in the build, so... I think what I'm gonna do is do the trial and error, try and figure it out, get the line in, dig a little space for us to walk around underneath the thing, and then we'll be good to move on to something new and, and interesting. But first, these lines, hmm. <laughs> uh, maybe, you know what, I should probably just start at the back of this thing and go for it like that. Uh, we'll start right here. All right, so I figured out where the first rail line needs to go. Now I need to get back to the end of this thing and start laying the rails in. Now laying the rails in, that's all pretty straightforward. At the end of this rail line, instead of doing a loop this time, we'll do a bounce. So that means powered rail right there, and then we need to power the thing just like that. This area will be left open so I can actually walk down here in case there is ever an issue with the farm. And I don't expect anything happening, but I mean, I guess you never really know. So now, yep, basically have to lay the rails and then I'm going to go ahead and get the other one in. Now currently, as it stands, the rails uh, just sort of end, but I have a plan for that that we'll get to in a minute. Okay, so the rail lines, boom, they are in. They go all the way under each and every single sheep stall to the back of the thing and right back over to the front. The minecart should ride through this whole thing, bounce off of the back wall, and then be sent right over to basically the collection area. But if there's a problem, well, it's not a big deal. We'll add more powered rails. Now we need to talk about moving the items from the farm over to the storage unit. Now, again, our storage unit is going to be right over here. Now, when it comes to moving our items, we really have three different choices. Choice one, well, we could move the minecarts all the way over to the storage area, but I don't really like that option. I like the idea of leaving our minecarts underneath the market area so they can continue to pick up wool. If we have our minecarts go from here all the way over to there, well, then they're kind of wasting time, right? They won't be picking up anything in here, and again, I just don't really like that idea. I'd like to have as little wool sitting on the ground as possible. So that one, that's ruled out. The next option is a bunch of hoppers. We could run a line of hoppers from right here all the way over to here, but let's be honest, your guy here doesn't have an iron farm, and I'm not willing to waste that much uh, iron on, on a line of hoppers, so that one is ruled out as well. That brings us to our final option. The final option is to turn the wool back into item form and move it like that. That's the one that I like, so meet the dropper. This thing is something that we haven't talked about at all quite yet. Droppers are just like dispensers, but they're happy. I mean, look at the face on the thing. You see the eyes and the mouth? Mm -hmm. Now you can't unsee that. You're welcome. Anyways, droppers are pretty similar to dispensers, except they don't dispense things. They only drop. So if we had a water bucket inside of this dropper, well, it would drop the water bucket instead of dispensing water. If we had shears inside of this dropper, it would drop the shears instead of shearing a sheep if there were a sheep in front of it. So... That's the dropper. We need a dropper for the circuit. Now, we will also need a hopper for the circuit as well. Now, instead of having the minecart basically bounce off of this wall, drop an item off, and then go back, I'd like to stop the minecart this time, have it unload everything that it's holding, and then let it continue on its journey. So, to do that, we need a simple circuit. Now, this circuit is pretty compact. We'll start with a hopper and a powered rail on top of it. Now, coming out of that hopper, we'll need to place a comparator right, right, right there, just like that. Now, this comparator should go over into a block that has a redstone torch on it, like that. Above that torch, we'll need another block so we can send the signal or the power from this redstone torch upwards into this block. Then we'll take a repeater and pull the signal right out of that block. Then we'll take a signal from this repeater and send it over into a block right there to power the rail. So, if we dig all the way around this thing, our rail is now powered and that is beautiful. That is good. That's exactly what we wanted. Now, we need to get a... Well, I guess what we could do is... We might as well do a demonstration. Let's go ahead and uh, you sleep and then we'll demonstrate. Alright, so this is as much as a demonstration as it is a test run as well. You, buddy, go. Okay, so it's going to go and start picking up a bunch of wool. I'm sure it will have a bunch right off the bat. 
but uh, after it comes back, it should stop on this block right here and unload everything into the hopper, and then things should be moved over into the dropper. Now, we don't have a circuit on this dropper quite yet, so it's not going to drop anything. It's just going to hold items. Uh, yes, and that is exactly what it's doing. Look at that. Wow, that's a lot of blue wool. <laughs> not going to complain. So we're going to need to build another circuit attached to this dropper next. But first, we need to finish unloading, and also, we we might space this out. We might put another hopper right there, but the minecart then continues on its journey. That's perfect. That behaves exactly as intended. So, now, let's go ahead and copy the circuit right over here. So, dropper that faces forwards, just like that. Hopper, powered rail. Comparator on a block, redstone torch on a block, another block, repeater, and another block. But, just to give things a little bit more room, like I mentioned, we're going to go ahead and move the droppers out just a little bit more. So we have more room for the circuit, and so I can actually box things in. If our droppers are dropping wool, and the wool ends up landing on the comparator, well, big problem. That was a waste of time. But the circuits are now in. Now we need an automatic circuit for this dropper, so it will actually drop everything that it has inside of it, which is, uh, right now, a lot of wool. So, hopper minecart number two, we're gonna go ahead and grab this guy and put it on this thing right there and let it continue to collect wool as well. Our dispensers and the hoppers next to them will start to fill up with a lot of wool and probably end up getting backed up, but that's fine. Now we need to talk about actually moving the items that will eventually be shot from these droppers over to the storage area. This part is actually pretty straightforward. So, we will eventually put probably glass blocks there and there to hold items in and right on top of it as well. But for now, we're going to skip that. Basically, these droppers need to drop items into a water stream. This water stream will then move everything over to the storage area. Now, because of how this lines up, we have a small problem right here. This, um, if this continued forward right here, we would hit that, which is kind of bad. We can't hit that, so we're going to have to drop our water stream that will be moving items in all the way down to there so we can run it right under this redstone. We obviously could reconfigure things, but it's fine. It doesn't matter that much. I'm fine with this circuit. We'll just drop things down a little bit more. So... I should probably be smart and box this in somehow, which means I think this, uh, stone bricks, probably, I, I think, um, yeah, we'll go with stone bricks right now. Actually, let's go ahead and do ice on this floor. If we do ice right on this floor, then items will be shot really, really quickly over to our sorting system, which I like a lot more than them slowly being moved over that way. So, packed ice floor going from here all the way over to over there. Now, the over there actually does come out on the surface. It comes out right here. So, I think we'll move our items from that corner all the way over to here, and then our items will be moved up. Now, moving the items up, that is very, very easy. We'll place the soul sand, we'll put water, we'll get rid of the soul sand, put sand there, put a bunch of kelp, you know, make a bunch of water sources so we have a bubble column, then our items are moved up. Now, instead of continuing them forward this way, I think we want to basically make a turn. So our items will be moved up to maybe like, I don't know, like here or so, I'm not too sure quite yet, but they'll be moved up and then they'll be moved over this way. And our storage will go along this cliff right here and then it'll turn and go over this way as well. So we'll basically have an L of a bunch of wool colors. So that's the plan. That means I have a little bit more work that I have to do now to, to really get this thing up and running. Now, if we put our water all the way over at this corner right here, it is obviously not going to reach all the way. Where it ends, like right here, easy. We'll put a sign, we'll put more water on the other side of the sign, and it will continue over that way. Right in front of where the bubble column starts, because we have a bunch of ice, we won't have any problem whatsoever. We'll just put another sign right there, and then the bubble column will begin. The water won't spill back out because of the sign, and the items will still move because of the slippery ice. So, no problem there at all. But, just to test it, let's go ahead and drop a stone brick, then we'll run over here, and if it's on the soul sand, we're good. It is on the soul sand. We are good. Now, we're going to need some glass for this build because our uh, item elevator will actually be visible. I think we should probably do black stained glass. That will look very clean, very cool, very nice. So, black stained glass it is. And then, uh, how much? Okay, we have 19 smooth stone. I'd like to use smooth stone as well. That kind of looks like piping to me, which is a look that I'm going for actually on this build. So, where this emerges from the ground, so let's say right here and there this will become glass and it'll go up to wherever we need it to go 
and then maybe we continue with the glass i'm not too sure but that'll happen basically and in here i think we'll just do maybe all this and then same with this side as well that could be all that since i have a bunch of stone bricks i'll also do the wall in here with stone bricks this wall will probably never be seen but might as well make it look nice if we have the blocks right and we're taking the time now if i make it look nice there is even less of a chance that i accidentally dig it up later when i'm working on a different project in here or something so might as well oh right so our item elevator should be working let's go ahead and test it though we'll throw a stone brick right down there and then it should be shot way up into the air uh huh perfect okay so everything's good and it's moved over to here this is where our storage system will begin hopefully we have enough room <laughs> i think we will but uh i guess we'll kind of find out well you know what we can come back to one more block we'll do that because why not okay so time to talk auto sorters auto sorters are amazing you can use these things to create fully automated storage rooms which is really really cool but it can also be a little bit expensive you'll need lots of iron for these things especially as they start to get on a bigger scale for example on this one we'll need 32 hoppers i don't even have enough on me right now so anyways an auto sorter start by placing a hopper going into a random block the block doesn't matter you can actually even remove the block now right below that first hopper place another one that goes into a double chest or a single chest this time but we we're probably going to need a lot of double chests so there we go there's the setup now we need the circuit the circuit comes out of the top hopper this hopper is the hopper that will be locked the lower hopper is basically for moving items into our storage system the top hopper is only for locking it will not and should not and cannot go into a chest if it does it won't work so the circuit that you need is this one coming up right here first we need to clear out a little bit of space start with a couple building blocks just like that and then one more going down here now in here we're gonna need to put another thing and then over here we'll need to put another thing on a thing so basically you should start with a t and then two blocks diagonally like that now grab a comparator and place it facing out of your top hopper just like that after the comparator redstone dust redstone dust redstone dust boom just like that now we need a redstone repeater over here and then finally to finish everything off a redstone torch right there that is the circuit that you need to lock your hoppers now technically you can shorten the circuit by one so like basically crunch everything in one block but uh, it's not really good for tiling if you make your circuit a little bit more compact yes you will be saving some space but you can have some overflow especially if you're placing hoppers right next to each other like again and again and again like we will be doing meaning we'll have more chests placed right next to this one we'll actually end up having eight chests in a row then a turn then eight more chests going down that way so basically what's going on here is this hopper will send out a signal based on how many items are inside of it so as you can see here we have a lot of items inside of it and it's being actually filtered out now but eventually it'll reach a certain amount and stop filtering items out that amount is right here so our current amount is set at 45 if we get a 46th item in that 46th item will be filtered out that is all due to this circuit and how long it is once we get a 46th item in the circuit is strengthened this is powered this is unpowered and the hopper is basically unlocked so that's how you set up a circuit to lock a hopper now how do we lock the thing well that's actually even easier so to start you'll actually need whatever block you're trying to sort or filter we're gonna go in order of the rainbow so red is first so we put our item that we're filtering and then we need 40 placeholders hold up hold up hold up i wanted to pause right here before we go on with things and say that if you want less of your sorting item to get locked inside of this hopper place 44 placeholders so a stack of 11 11 11 and 11 instead of 10 10 10 10 that number that we talked about before 45 that still definitely does apply so how i set things up i will actually end up having five red wool locked inside of the sopper at any given time once it's finished if you're sorting something like diamonds definitely use more placeholders definitely absolutely again since i'm sorting something like wool i'm not really concerned about it but i just wanted to cut back in here to say the amount needed total 45 has not changed i didn't mention that in the video 
These placeholders can really be anything, but I always recommend using placeholders that will not get mixed into the system. If we had cobblestone slabs fall into here, they'll actually go over this hopper and then be filtered into here and mess everything up. We don't want that to happen at all. So get placeholder blocks that basically won't ever fall into your sorting system. Cobblestone slabs will never be in this system. Then the red wool right there. So now only red wool will be moved into this chest. If we put something else above it, like uh, redstone, it's not going to be picked up. After I get all of my hoppers and redstone in, we'll be putting water here. And if there were water here, this redstone would be continued to be moved down our storage system. So that's good. That's how that works. Now I need to copy this over 15, no, not 16, 15 more times. So bunch of repeaters, bunch of comparators, lots of redstone dust, and of course, lots of torches. But first, uh, where is eight? So one, two, three, four, five, six and then seven, eight, right there. So this is where we'll do our turn, right after that, which is good. We definitely have enough room for that, cool. All right, so I don't have all of my top hoppers locked quite yet. I only have the first one locked, but I'm ready to talk about the next step of the build. So this is where our storage room will be. We'll probably put a bunch of item labels like up here or maybe even set back one more block. I'm not too sure, but we will have labels on these chests. Now we can continue to expand these chests downwards as far as we need to. So if we need to go two more like places down, we could do that. If we needed to go all the way down to bedrock, well, we could also do that as well. To do that, just continue placing hoppers below this one. So we would do a chest here, hopper going into the chest, and your items will continue to be filtered into these storage chests. For now, we might start with just one row or maybe two or three, I'm not too sure. But uh, this is for eight colors. So red, orange, yellow, green, lime, and then the blues or something like that. But that's not all of the colors. We have eight more colors after that. So up here, we have water that goes up from the bubble column and goes over. Then we have a sign, and then we have a new water source starting on the first hopper. Then this water goes eight blocks all the way to the last hopper. Then we have another sign. Now after that, we'll place another water source right there to turn our items around this corner. Then, uh, basically, this whole thing gets copied and goes down that way this time. That's the whole storage system. Our items should be moved across this thing. They should turn. Um, yeah, they seem to turn fine. So I, I think we're going to go with this design. And if it doesn't work, then we'll have to reconfigure a lot. Well, if it doesn't work, we'll have a big problem. But that is what I've got so far. That's what I'm thinking. So that means it's time for me to come in and start getting a lot of stuff in. I have a lot of work to do. I also need to make this thing look nice, and I like to match it to things in the area. So I'm thinking that maybe the front water source area, so this one right here, these blocks should maybe become sandstone, and then I should use some acacia log pillars in here to make things look really nice. So I don't know. I'm going to try and mess with the design. I'm going to try and also get all of the hopper stuff in because there's a lot to this project. We actually still will have one more circuit that we need to do as well today, so... Uh, yeah, I got a lot of work to do, so wish me luck. I will be back soon. It's all pretty straightforward, just copying everything that I've done uh, already over again, but uh, it's going to take some time. <laughs> Shouldn't be too hard, though. Hmm, <laughs> what do we think about this design right here? Hmm. Hmm, and then item frames up there, this pillar continues upwards. Ooh, I think we're onto something. That should be a pretty clean design. Maybe I've already come up with our setup. And then this could actually go right across the top. Ooh, 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 ooh. I think I know exactly what I'm doing here. Oh, man. Now I just have to get it in. The building has gone insanely well, in my opinion. Here is what we have now. This will eventually be the entire, or at least the main part, of the wool storage building question mark as a building question mark because i'm not sure if it'll be a building or if i'll decide to kind of leave it open air but i i have a few ideas so everything in here is good to go i have all of the hoppers locked and i actually went ahead and brought some of the wool that we already had into the storage chests now obviously this area is empty down here 
eventually i do plan on expanding this thing downwards i'm sure these uh these first chests will end up filling up and we'll need more storage but for now really just to save time when it comes to farming wood because i mean look at this axe that's kind of a problem we'll have to deal with that very soon but uh yeah for now i put a shelf in there now back here some of the redstone is still exposed over here i buried it underneath ground pretty good it's kind of a bummer there's no easy way to access it but i think it'll be fine over here i'm planning on doing the exact same thing the ground will basically just be filled in in here and then eventually i'll come over this thing and put a top on it now i think the top of this area should probably be done with spruce trap doors or even just solid smooth stone blocks i'm not too sure quite yet all that i know is that there's not a top on it right now and uh that's not how it's always going to stay now we have one more circuit to talk about one more thing that we need to build now thankfully this circuit is very very easy to do so uh these droppers are full again and they also need to they, they need to be wired up they don't do anything as it stands basically we need to make our droppers actually drop things otherwise this whole thing that we built would be entirely pointless so this is actually really easy to achieve start by placing a sticky piston down one block one block back from our dropper then on top of that sticky piston we'll need to place an observer that looks towards the dropper now temporary block right there and then another observer nope wrong way <laughs> temporary block right there observer nope right there observer looking towards this one then finally comparator right there now this is going to throw blocks everywhere because we don't have the correct walling in here but if we had the walls right there and then we had another block right there this dropper should spit everything out and then it'll drop right there and then fall into our storing system that is a beautiful beautiful sight uh-huh i love the look of that so we need to go ahead and actually copy this circuit again right over here we're gonna go ahead and actually just open this area up a little bit and i might even add a trap door to get into this area from the sheep farm area so what if we leave that open and we'll do a trap door there i think i can make the trap door blend in with uh like a spruce trap door i think it'll look pretty good maybe just maybe we do ladder ladder then we go and get a trap door right on top of that yep that blends in pretty uh, okay we well, should probably change these to like coarse dirt but anyways ladders to go down into here and now i need my second circuit but first i'm gonna pull all this stuff out i don't want to overload this thing right off the bat so observer looking at that thing then another observer looking at that spot and then finally a comparator in here right there like that and then blocks uh, you need to shoot stuff into the water actually <laughs> thank you very much so if we place some building blocks like that that should actually be good and then same with over here that's good that's good and then maybe just to be safe we do that as well now we should have zero problems whatsoever we'll just fill everything in like that that's where our items will be thrown and into the storage system so now we just need to go back over to the storage system and check the thing and make sure it's actually working because if it's not working or we're gonna have to make some changes but i'm sure it's working perfectly yeah that is so much better you can almost not notice the thing but the storage how are we doing over here i saw the items fall up there that's awesome i'm definitely going to leave this exposed by the way so moment of truth what do we have red okay i like it orange yellow lime green uh-huh 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 that looks beautiful to me it looks like everything is working wonderfully now this brown wool i want to mention this we still don't have our brown sheep over there but i actually had two brown wool inside of the storage building which was pretty crazy that was the exact amount that i needed to lock the hopper and put one in the item frame for now this thing will be empty until we can actually find a jungle but it looks like our wool storage sorting system is finally complete this whole area is now a really really or it should be a really efficient and effective farm and i'm sure in a few episodes time we'll have more wool than we would ever actually really need now the downside here is the minecart sounds but let's be honest uh, that's a small downside compared to the upside of having all of this in here like this is amazing so now i just need to actually finish covering everything back up properly fill uh spaces in so we don't get spawns down here and we have a fully functional a wool farm this is the best wool farm i've ever built i'm like really really excited about this actually i am 
I'm pretty happy. It was a good day. And so, that is going to just about do it for this episode of the Minecraft Guide. Now, as you guys can notice, this area doesn't really look finished, and that is definitely the case. We will absolutely have to come back in here soon and finish this whole area up, because it just looks unfinished. It looks nice, but not finished. That might be a stream project, but I'm not sure. We'll see. As always, I stream on twitch.tv slash waddles. There is a link in the description. You should definitely check it out for yourself. Down below the video is the fresh Elite Tier merch. Down below the video is the like button that you should definitely be tapping. Subscribe as well, and thank you all very, very much for watching. I will see you all in the next one. Until next time, Elites, stay cool. I'll see you.